looking off in the general direction of Louisiana this morning. It's about 300 miles to that hurricane. You can see a little bit of high cloud there associated with it, but most of it is beyond the horizon. Hurricane Ida has intensified significantly over the past 48 hours, and it's exceeded the model guidance and, of course, the official forecast. So I've decided to make this video public so that we don't have old content on the channel. It definitely looked different back on Friday. And there it is, making landfall already. It was expected to come inland during the evening tonight, but uh, it's already crossing the coastal region right there. And we've also got Hurricane Nora entering the Gulf of California. It is weakening. However, the remnants will have a major impact on the weather in the desert southwest. There's the Slidell next rat at the time we recorded this. The hurricane definitely making landfall there coming inland. It is fortunate that we're not looking at a track a little bit to the east because that's the eye wall right there. It appears it's going to take a track kind of like this, a little bit more towards Baton Rouge. New Orleans is located in that area right there. And they will certainly get the brunt of those spiral bands on the right side of the storm, but the highest wind core will be just a little bit west of the city. The storm surge, though, pretty much heading right there with that volume of high winds and wave action. So we're going to see a lot of the coastal areas inundated. And let's take a look at that storm surge. Yeah, it definitely looks worse than the last time we looked at it. 12 to 16 feet from Boothville back to Port Fourchon and Lake Pontchartrain there looking at 5 to 8 feet. Now, I'm not really an expert as far as the levee system or how close we are to inundation of some of these areas. However, this certainly looks to be a dangerous storm. And we can see we've got 6 to 9 feet all the way back to Gulfport and on the other side over to Morgan City. And let's take a look at the statistics there. Ida, 130 knots, sustained winds, 150 miles an hour. Central pressure, 933. The strongest storms on record are in the neighborhood of 900 millibars, but 933 is still dangerous. Looks like we got Julian out there. I think that was heading mostly north, so that'll be out of the picture there. Tropical depression 10 also heading to the north. And that five-day outlook, that's probably the next thing we're going to have to worry about. There's a chance it could recurve in a similar manner to Tropical Depression 10. The GFS, not looking for anything definite on that. Looks like easterly waves moving from east to west there. However, I don't see any closed systems coming from Africa or anything like that. There is a bit of a tropical depression out around September 9th in Texas, but uh, that's about all that I'm really seeing there. So that could be a signal for maybe a little bit of a weaker tropical storm, maybe in about a week somewhere in the western Gulf. But it's too early to know for sure. And here's a look at the radar. Some of you have probably been hearing about Grand Isle. It's located right here. One of the key attractions this morning has been a webcam at Grand Isle. It's been showing a lot of the storm surge coming in. It has been going underwater, and just recently, like in the last 15 minutes, it did go offline. A lot of people streaming from New Orleans, but uh, the main wind field has not really moved into that region yet. It'll be kind of on the edge. Wind gusts over 120 miles per hour have been clocked at an elevated weather station in far southeastern Louisiana. The storm surge has already pushed up to about five to six feet late this morning at Shell Beach and at Waveland, Mississippi. And wind gusts up to 100 miles an hour have been recorded there in Grand Isle, where that webcam is. The police chief there says. They have a wind gauge which measured 148 mile an hour winds and then it broke. About 50 people in Grand Isle have stayed behind. 
half of them residents and half of them, unfortunately, first responders. So kind of a grim picture in that region. This is a map of Grand Isle and some of the coastal regions. The eye wall appears to be affecting mostly this area right here, just west of Grand Isle and back towards the main highway. Here's a look at an air navigation chart. I like looking at these because they show everything, every settlement, village, and all the infrastructure. So the eye wall is mostly going to be affecting this region. That's going to be the heaviest damage and surrounding that widespread damage all the way through the coastal region. And based on the current track, we're probably going to see that storm, the heavier winds, moving towards Homa and some of these other towns. These are more heavily populated, so they could be seeing some very serious problems. New Orleans is about 40 miles to the northeast of that. They will be getting lesser winds. But as I mentioned earlier, there could be some substantial flooding problems. I cannot really predict what that will look like. I don't know much about the levee system there and how it interacts with the storm surge, but I would be very concerned in at least some places in that area. And then we've got the Mississippi River to contend with. This is a heavily industrialized area. The winds should be coming down as we move north, but probably a lot of power outages. And then we have Baton Rouge, major city. So a lot of potential problems as that storm moves inland. And one last look at the storm. I'm going to show you the base velocity. This is always quite interesting. We've got to keep in mind that the radar is up to the top and to the right. So we're looking at the storm basically along these radials. So what do we see here? We see a very strong inbound and further to the west, very strong outbound. And that's the rotation. It's a very classic signature there. There is some range folding in between. We don't have to worry too much about that. But we can sample these winds. These are going to be up at about 7,000 feet. It is pretty far from the radar. But we're getting winds of 114 knots inbound and about 110 outbound. So that's some pretty strong circulation. But as that moves inland, the frictional effects should start tearing it up. However, with the ground being very saturated, that could be a problem and that could result in a slower deintensification than what we would otherwise expect. So NHC forecasters have already been considering that, so I'm not going to get too much into the detail on that. But let's look at what they're forecasting. Coming inland, yeah, look at that 90 knots at 6 p.m., and down to 50 knots, so kind of a very gradual tapering as we go into this evening. And the story is not over tonight. Yeah, this thing is still pretty strong as it comes inland. Southwestern Mississippi, I'm expecting widespread power outages. And I'm sure the crews are going to be very busy this week. And I think a lot of rural places may not get their power back on for at least one to two weeks. So there could be some humanitarian aspects to this whole situation. And even tomorrow, yeah, look at that. This is tomorrow afternoon going very slowly inland. So that's going to dump a lot of rain. You can see the QPFs here bring in 10 inches. NHT has posted 15 inch amounts for a lot of that area. So the QPFs may be underestimating some of the problems here. Anyway, I want to get this video uploaded and posted as rapidly as possible, since this is a situation in progress. We'll be back tomorrow with the private video for the Patreon supporters. And for everybody else, we will see you here on Wednesday. Stay safe, take care, and have a great Sunday. Bye-bye.